Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I got a huge time saver if you ever need to resize media on the timeline. I call this OMG Photo Resize in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, I'm gonna show you the final result and then I'll break it down so we can start it from scratch. And then I'll show you all the little things that I added to make this, this is basically a, a slideshow of images to make it look a little bit more interesting, different kinds of push-ins and different kinds of transitions and some music. So let's have a look at the final result. All right, so I think you get the idea. Um, I've got a, a whip transition on here, but the idea is, the first most important part is that all of these images are typical photographic images, which means they're horizontal, they're vertical, they're medium resolution, and some of these are really, really high resolution, four and 5,000 pixels. And to try to resize those into a timeline, and I've got a square timeline here, um, it's just a lot of noodling around, and I've got 79 of them here, so if you've ever had to resize 79 of them, you know it's a problem. So we're going to uh, start from scratch, I'm gonna throw this away and start again. But before I do, I want to set the preferences to make life easier for me. The default still image size is five seconds. That's a little bit too long for something like this. I actually want it three seconds. And then the transitions are typically 30 frames. That's 15 on each side. I want it 10 full uh, frames, so it's five on each side, because that's fast paced. This is a, a quicker uh, slideshow with uh, faster music. So let me get rid of everything on this timeline. And I've, I'm going to import the, the images, um, but I'm gonna set the duration in the preferences. So in the edit menu on Windows, Premiere Pro menu on Mac, preferences, timeline. So I'll set the transition to 10 frames and the still duration to three seconds. Make sure that this is on seconds and that one's on frames. Click OK. If you've already imported media, this won't change the media that you have. It, it changes the next media you import. So the easiest way for importing a folder, you can choose import or control command I or just double click in a blank area here. And I'm gonna select uh, these motion array stock photos, import the whole folder. So now the folder is there. And I just wanna show you that if we look at this, you can see these are all different sizes, different aspect ratios all over the board. That's the, the thing that I wanted to tackle the most is how do you resize all of those? Oh boy, you won't believe how easy it is. So I've got a square timeline down here and you make a timeline, a sequence by clicking here and adding a new sequence. And this one in the sequence settings is 1080 by 1080. This is a very typical square uh, social media size. I'm gonna show you vertical, horizontal, and even 4K. So we drag the photos in. They're all two seconds, but you can see they're way too big. They don't fit. So here's the magic. You select all of the images or media. This would work for any media. Go to the effects. And by the way, I'm using the Essentials workspace. So I'll go to my effects here and search for REF, reframe. And because I have all of the images selected in the timeline, all I have to do is double click. And you'll watch this one will reframe. You'll get a, a progress bar on the bottom right as reframe does its work. Now my system is pretty darn fast. So it's, to, oh, there we go. 
analyzing for auto reframe. So it does take a few moments as it's looking at the uh, images and reframing them. This is the uh, Adobe Sensei technology. And once it's done, all of them are ready to go. And a good way to check this is to just use the down arrow to check each one. If you've got a slow computer, this might take a little bit longer to, to page through them, but you can see how amazing this is. Now we are gonna tweak a few of the sizes. There we go. Okay, so let's tweak this size. So I'll select it and in the effects controls, there's auto reframe, it turns motion off. So you can't have both, both motion and auto reframe, but you can change the offset. And that's what we have to do here because somebody's cut off in the photo. So in auto reframe, reframe offset, we just click and drag this. If you add the shift key, you'll move this quicker. There we go. So that one's done. Let's move down to another one. And some of these are taking longer because they're bigger. Oh, that one. Now here's the problem. The other photo is still selected, not this one. So when I change this number, it changes something I'm not looking at. This is a really typical uh, thing to get mixed up with in Premiere Pro. So you have to make sure you click on the clip or go to the sequence menu and turn on selection follows playhead. Now, wherever you have the playhead, it will be selected and ready to change. I'll shift change the offset. Okay, now watch what happens when I hit the down arrow, it's taking me to that clip and it's selecting it because I've got a few more to fix. This one offset, come down, make sure you're not changing the position, you're changing the offset, down, down. Now some of these like this one, you might think, well, I keep going down. You can't because the top of the frame is cropped off. That's the way that this was shot. So you can't bring that back. All right, let's keep going. That one can come up a little bit. Down, down, down. Oh, somebody missing there. So you do have to tweak some of these, but it's a heck of a lot easier doing it this way than having giant images that you, uh, you have to really make smaller. Oh, someone missing there. Now there's one coming up that I really think works well. If we rotate it and I'll show you what I mean. Look, it's doing such a good job. Oh, the twins, move them over. Maybe tweak them over a bit. This one. They were actually shot in this position. So we can go to reframe rotation and set this to minus 90, boom. Fixes it perfectly. All right, so we're almost done. See, many of these are just fine as is. Oh. Now this one, I, I kept this one in here specifically to show you it's a poorly shot photo because part of this person's head is in there. So I can't get it back, but let me scale this up a bit and then move it over. So I'm reframing her a little bit and that's it. So all of these are done now. And if you're happy with this, if this is all you wanted, then you're done. All the media is reframed and it fits perfectly. But if you saw in my example, I added two more things. I added a transition and I added a little bit of a push. And that push is a scale, which you can add so easily and you can copy and paste to all the rest. So let's go back to the first one. By the way, I'm gonna turn off selection follows playhead. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so for this first clip, 
I can't change the, the uh, motion settings and I don't want to keyframe the auto reframe. So I'll go back to my effects and look for transform. Double click, add transform, and I'm going to add a scale keyframe at the beginning. So I'm, I'm selecting this clip and making sure I'm at the beginning. And I'll move this over a little bit and type 120. We'll see if that's good. OK, so I like to do it this way because then I can drag it over here. It's just easier to get to. Maybe select both of them, right click and set it at Bezier just to make it a little bit more organic. All right, so the first one is pushing in, but the rest aren't. Just grab it, copy it. And if you select all of the other clips, if you hit the A key and hold Shift, it forward selects everything on the timeline so you don't have to jump out all the time. A key grabs the, the forward select tool, Shift, changes the forward select tool to just that track. So they're all selected, right click, paste attributes at the top. And I'm just pasting transform, not auto reframe again, and not any of these other ones, just transform, click OK. And just like before, now we've got each one of them pushing in. The last step is to add the transition. And I like this whip transition for this. I'll just search for whip. And to make that blue line, right click, set as default transition. You'll see that this is also accelerated. If you don't have a, a fast enough GPU or a GPU at all, you can still use this. It's just going to be slow to play back. All of the rendering is going to look fine. So to make the whole timeline, have that transition, I'll just select it. And because that one is set as the default transition, Control D on Windows, Command D on Mac, which is applied default transition that we set to 10 frames, remember, at the beginning. So now when we go back, each one of them is flying in, just like I showed you, boom, boom, boom. And we'll go back to our project, add some music in there. And there we go. And of course, I can use the wonderful remix tool and just drag that out. And it's going to remix that music to be the full length. OK, so for our square timeline, we're done. Great. But what if we want a vertical timeline? Oh, boy, a horizontal timeline and a 4K. Let's go make them. So back over to making our new item, make a new sequence. This one is going to be our HD sequence. Make another one. We'll use the same settings to start, but we'll change these numbers. 10, 80, 19, 20. Call this vertical. Make another one. Again, I'll use the same settings, but then I'll change this to 3840 by 2160 for our 4K Ultra HD. Click OK. So watch this. I'll go back to the square and select everything and copy it. Go to the vertical one, make sure I'm at the beginning, and paste. And again, you'll see it's playing auto reframe again right from the start. So it's as if I, I made this again from scratch. Auto reframe is going to analyze all the images for the new sequence size, which is, in our case, vertical. So now they're fitting vertical. Amazing. Now, some of the, the people that are, see, we've got two people here, and there's the two twins. So 
it's not going to fix those. We're going to have to resize that, either have one person on each side. So you can't easily fit a horizontal frame, the full frame with all these people from a composition point of view. But at least we've got stuff in there. Now, HD, same thing as before. We paste that in and then it's going to uh, analyze this and now put everything in there and even 4K, paste that in and now it's doing 4K and everything is set, ready to go. Pretty cool, huh? Auto reframe, not just for videos, and I've got a video, I'll link to it uh, in the description, where the, the job typically is to take something like a horizontal video and, and actually follow the subject around and recut a new video with auto reframe. But hey, you can use it for still images too. Hey, if you're new to Video Review and you found this informative, Take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once, monthly, any amount. Thanks to all of our wonderful donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to root around in the effects inside Premiere Pro and come up with completely new ways to use the stuff you already have.